welcome Shnei Yoon up here to respond to that and talk about VC. Okay, so I'm going to try to stand up here with this because I have some notes. How does this work? Um, but that, that was amazing. We, I met with uh, Leilu uh, earlier this morning, and I really do kind of want to get back to a little bit of what he's doing and, and kind of integrate that back into how, how we are working as independent Asian American media makers and what the learning from this is and how that can actually strengthen our community. So we're really going to take this back to VC and see how you know, this is going to strengthen our work and how we can kind of um, build upon this as, as kind of a bridge. Um, so thank you, Karen, for inviting me to this and Chiwe and, and everybody else. Um, so I had a, a, actually quite a lot of thoughts um, this weekend as, you know, we've been having all these um, very separate and distinct conversations. And I, I didn't really know what I was going to talk about until actually right now. Because um, I, I've been really inspired by a lot of what people are, are saying today. And I wanted to kind of give a little bit of a different context and a framework, just because I, I do work with an organization that has a history um, that, that goes back 42 years, right? So VC has been working with filmmakers and, and helping kind of promote filmmakers since in the 70s, 80s. You know, 90s, 2000s, up until today, and talk about change. You know, we're we're here to talk about the present and the future, but in this kind of organizational framework of VC, we're also thinking of the past. So it was really for me the past, present, and the future, right? And that really helped me to contextualize where we are because we we don't exist in a bubble, right? That. Um, there have been many points where we as filmmakers and as a community have had to um, kind of adjust and, and remake ourselves. Um, and one of the things is um, that within that, there's uh, this idea of being able to preserve that work, right, and, and to take that forward, preserve our history. And that's a lot of what VC does, is to really take um, what we're doing today, kind of this living, breathing history, and how do we access that for tomorrow, right, for, for the future generations? Because this is kind of a, a constantly changing, uh, you know, um, evolving spectrum of, of work, right? And this idea of curation came to me, you know? So Chi Wei asked me the question the other day of, um, you know, do we still need media arts organizations? You know, do we still need film festivals? What is the need for that in today's kind of media society? And I thought, we're preserving this history and we're really curating the work for tomorrow, right? Because there really is nobody else doing that, specifically for the Asian American community. And especially in kind of this digital platform, this digital media, there's so much information out there. How do we take that and curate that for future generations? There's so much kind of media data Right? And so this that's something that VC kind of works at every day, is thinking, how do we take that, how do we catalog that, and how do we make that available for the future? So that, that was quite important. Um, and these kind of larger shifts that are happening um, in the media sphere, um, I was going through some back notes from VC, and there were some kind of board minutes about the change from film to video. And, you know, I mean, there were a lot of people who said, no, we have to stick to film. You know, and had that happened, we wouldn't have existed, right? I mean, so it's this idea of being able to evolve as a media organization. That's, that's so important. Um, also, the, set, the second point that I wanted to make is advocacy, right? As an organization, um, we need to be advocates. As individuals, we need to be advocates. As independent filmmakers, as Asian Americans, you know, there's nobody else really doing that for us. If we're not going to advocate for ourselves, nobody else is going to do that, right? So a really quick story. When I first moved to Los Angeles, um, I met a woman named uh, Karen Marasaki from Washington, D.C. And she started this organization called the Asian American Media Coalition. And she literally kind of pulled me by the lapels and said, okay, we're, we're going to go into the studios now, and you're going to tell these heads of TV that they need to hire more um, Asian American TV directors. And I said, what? Like, you're gonna make me do it. And um, if you know, but I, if you know Karen, I mean, basically you don't say no to Karen. Like, you just say yes, Karen, and you, you know, you do. She tells you to do. So um, that was about four years ago, and I literally went into a room full of studio executives, and I said to them, um, I think it was Steve McPherson at the time over at ABC, and I said, 
you really need to hire more Asian American directors. And he literally looked me in the eyes and he said, well, actually, there's not enough talent out there for us to hire Asian American directors. And I was like, you're kidding, right? You know, um, Just give us that opportunity and, and we'll fill that hole for you. you know? um, but I left there and I, I thought, well, that meeting didn't do anything. You know, I mean, he's going to go into another meeting and forget all about this. But um, Karen's been doing this for 10 years. You know, 10 years of having those meetings have really made quite a big impact. And the numbers are quite staggering when you look at it. Um, Asian American executives, Asian American writers, Asian American you know, producers have nearly doubled in the last 10 years, if not more. Asian American directors in the last five years has quadrupled, right? But of course, 10 years ago, they had literally one Asian American TV director working. I mean, it was, that was the number one, right? And now we have about you know, five to 10 that get work every year. So I mean, it really is up to us as organizations to really advocate um, on behalf of, of Asian Americans um, and working, whether it's in the industry or whether it's in kind of this independent media sphere, um, championing you know, our stories and what we do because nobody else is, is really going to do that. And lastly, I think it's really just to be flexible in kind of the workplace as organizations, as an organization that is 40 years old. Um, that is, it's challenging. It's really challenging to know kind of what's happening on the ground floor. And to have these types of conversations is really important for us um, to, to create programs that are directly going to affect what our, our media makers are doing. So in the past three years, we've put together a number of different programs. C3 Conference for Creative Content, which hopefully will be at Fox Studios this summer. Um, and that's really having this kind of larger two-day engaged dialogue about how we can get Asian Americans kind of working within um, more traditional media, media um, locales, right, with TV, but also bringing in people like YouTube and Hulu and Amazon Studios and all those people to see like how we can kind of integrate our work into the larger work that's happening. Um, and then of course, you know, things like this, what Leilu has been able to create is this really self-determined kind of idea, right? And VC has always been about that. It's really a place where we've kind of created our own path. You know, um, the Bob Nakamura's of the world and the Eddie Wong's of the world in 1970 were trying to create a space. And it's disconcerting, but at the same time, you know, empowering to know that we're still having those same conversations because we still want to be self-determined in what it is that we want to do. So um, I think that's kind of where I'm going to end. And hopefully we can kind of go back to Leilu and take a look at more of his site. Great. Cool. Thank you, Shanae. <laughs>